Hello, this is Justin at The Tech Train here. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can tidy up a very large spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel by using checkboxes. You can see I have sections here, sections one, two, and three, uh, which can be quite large. Uh, I can hide or compress any of these sections by unticking the tick boxes at the top left here. Let's hide section two by unticking assessment two, and that is now compressed. I can do the same thing with section one by unticking that box, and then section three by unticking that box. If I want to expand any one of these sections, I simply tick the box for that section. Let's expand section two by ticking the box there, and you can see I can expand section two like that. Let's expand section one, there it goes, and then finally section three. So this is a, a way of tidying up a large, possibly long uh, spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel in a really easy way. So let's have a look at how we do this. This idea came about because I was developing a, a grade tracker for my school and it, uh, it was important that it was all contained or at least a large part of it was contained on a single sheet but it ended up being incredibly long with uh, actually about 16 sections like this. And it was just unwieldy uh, having to go from left to right along the scroll bar as well as up and down. Um, and so I came up with the idea that it would be helpful to have a, uh, a button or checkbox system that allowed you to close off those sections that you didn't currently need to view, but have that system allow you to very easily make those uh, sections come back. So that was the uh, the premise for the idea. Um, I'm sure there are different uh, ways of applying it, different uh, purposes, uh, but let's see how we do that. It's actually quite straightforward. Um, but to do this, you will need the developer toolbar that you see up here. Now, by default, that isn't uh, visible. So if you don't have the developer toolbar at the top, very easy to get it. All you have to do is find a, a blank area on the ribbon somewhere, it doesn't really matter where. Uh, right click and choose customize the ribbon. Uh, when you do that, you'll have a little pop-up uh, menu appear, eventually, there it is. And on the right-hand side, these are all the tabs which could be visible. Uh, generally, they'll all be visible apart from developer. So you simply put a little tick in that box next to developer and click OK, and you will now have the developer toolbar. So the next thing we need to do is to insert our uh, checkboxes, which I'm going to put in this uh, little square up here, the cell here. So to insert a checkbox in the developer toolbar, we go to insert. Now you do have uh, two sets of tools. One is form controls and the other is active X controls. I'm not gonna go into the details, but we are going to be using just active X controls for this, makes life a little easier. So I'm going to um, choose the checkbox there. You can see in the active X control, do be careful because the icon does look identical in both form and active X, but click once on the checkbox. Uh, your mouse will turn into a little crosshair and you can click and drag out a frame that will contain the checkbox and also the text after it, uh, assuming you want text. Now you can click and move this around because we're in what we call design mode. You can see this button here is called design mode and you can see that it has been depressed, which means that I can click on and drag this around. If I untoggle design mode, uh, I can no longer click and drag this around, uh, but I can now start to use it. So it'll have a uh, ability to, for me to click uh, the text here and the text box will be checked or unchecked. To go back into design mode, simply click that design mode button. We can now click on it and move it around. Now, while we're in design mode, um, mood, mode <laughs> even, we can make a few changes to this. Uh, for example, we'll need to change the text. So click once on the checkbox to select it and come up to properties at the top. This opens up the, uh, the properties panel for that particular control. Uh, to change the text, you want the caption property. So I can simply delete that and um, I'm going to call this assessment one. Uh, you can also change the font as well. So you can um, click once on the uh, font um, option there and then click the ellipsis button on the right. Or you can simply double click the word font 
I'll bring this panel up here. I'm simply going to change it to bold, but you can change the font and the font size and all that kind of thing if you so want. There we are. We'll close that panel down. So we now have our first checkbox for the uh, first column. Now, uh, for the first section rather, this checkbox here is going to hide all of the columns from B to H. So I want my total column, that's the sort of total of all these assessment points here. I want this column to remain visible, but these to be hidden, not deleted. They are they're still there. They still form part of the spreadsheet. The numbers and values within that are still able to be used by all the formulas. So nothing will change as far as the functionality of your spreadsheet is concerned. It's just simply that parts of it are not visible to the user. So um, make a note of the columns which are going to be hidden. So that's B to H for this one. And still in design mode, we're simply going to double click this checkbox. This will open up your code window and it will also automatically create this subroutine. A subroutine is simply a block of code that does something. Uh, this subroutine is called checkbox one click. Uh, in other words, it's all the code that will happen when we click the checkbox. Now, of course, when we click the checkbox, we don't know, well, the computer doesn't know uh, whether that uh, checkbox is ticked or unticked. It knows it's been clicked, but it doesn't know whether it's ticked or unticked. So we need to work that out first of all. So we're going to have to start with an if question. Uh, if the tick box, uh, sorry, if the checkbox is ticked, then do this, otherwise do something else. So how do we reference the checkbox? Well, there's two things we'll need. One is the name of the sheet. Uh, mine's called sheet one because I have an incredible imagination. Uh, so sheet one, make a note of that. If you're gonna change it, do it now. Uh, the second thing we'll need is the name of the checkbox. Now the name of the checkbox, you can find it in properties, but of course, if you've double clicked it, you know the name because it's right there at the top of your subroutine, checkbox one. So those are the two things that you'll need to know. So if sheets, uh, which sheet are we talking about? Well, this is the name of the sheet that we have just checked. So that goes in speech mark. So if this sheet, um, and then we want the object that's in this sheet. Now it's uh, an OLE object linking and embedding object. So an OLG, OLE object. Um, and what is that object? Well, it's this checkbox. So we call that checkbox one. There we go. So that goes in speech marks and brackets as well. So that's the name of the sheet and the name of the object in that sheet. So it is an object um, and we need to know its value. So what is the value of this checkbox? Uh, basically, a checkbox can either be ticked or unticked. So it's a Boolean variable effectively, true or false. So if we say true, then what does that mean? Well, if the tick box is true, that means it is ticked, we want these columns to be visible. So we need to make sure that if they are uh, visible, um, th if they're invisible rather, they need to be shown. So let's now reference those columns. So it's sheets again, and it's sheet one that I'm working on. Uh, this time it's not the object, it's the columns we're looking at and specifically it's columns B to H. So we put the first column and then a colon and the second column. Uh, so it's just those uh, columns um, and it is the entire column. Um, and we want to know if that's hidden. So is it hidden? So, um, or rather, is, is it visible? So we're going to say here uh, equals false. So, oops, what have I done there? Entire column dot hidden equals false. Oh, I've forgotten the brackets at the end of sheet one. There we go. So this here is saying if the uh, checkbox is ticked, so if it is ticked, um, then the columns in this sheet, uh, the hidden value needs to be false. In other words, they are not hidden. So false is the negative, so we're saying they are not hidden. That's what we should be saying. So if the checkbox is ticked, then those columns should not be hidden. But what about if the checkbox isn't uh, ticked, if it's, if it's unticked? Uh, well, that's the only other possible option. So we're simply going to say, take that line of code there and change it to true. 
and then we can end our if question. So that's all the code we need here, really. So we're simply saying that if the checkbox is ticked, then make the uh, column hidden uh, property false. Uh, otherwise, make the column hidden property true. So they are hidden. Uh, so that's it. We can simply close this uh, window now. So close the code, wi uh, code window, go back into our uh, spreadsheet. And to test this out, we'll need to come out of design mode. So I'm going to click on uh, the design mode button to come back out of that. Um, and I can tick this box. Now, of course, ticked means it should be visible. It already was visible, so that doesn't change anything. But now if I untick that box, you can see all those columns have now compressed. If you look closely, you can see that they are still hidden there between columns A and I. And you could manually unhide those columns if you wanted to. But if we tick this box, there they are, they come back again. So you can now expand and contract all of those columns, no problem at all. Well, let's just do one more. Let's do the same thing for these columns here. So this is assessment two, and it's uh, columns J to P that we want to hide now. Uh, now we go into design mode, but of course we don't need to worry about drawing everything from scratch. We can simply click on this checkbox here, do a quick copy and paste and just pop that underneath like that. Um, and now we'll go to properties and change the text to a te uh, assessment two like that. And I can double click that and you see how it's got another subroutine made for me now for checkbox two. So rather than typing all the code out, I'm simply going to copy all of the code inside this subroutine and paste it down here and just change the name of the checkbox to checkbox two. Now, I think the columns were J to P, weren't they? Yes, they are columns J to P. So I'll just change that here. So that's J to P there and also J to P there. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there we are. So now if I come out of uh, design mode, um, I can untick either of those columns uh, and bring those sections back. So there we are. Hide assessment two, hide assessment one. Um, and that's it. That's all there is to it. So it's a very quick and easy way of being able to concertina uh, and contract and expand sections of a spreadsheet to make the whole spreadsheet a little less unwieldy. Um, I'll put the uh, code for assessment one, that first checkbox, in the comments below. Um, but uh, if you have any questions or problems with this, uh, do please leave a comment below. I do read all comments, and as soon as I'm able to, I do reply uh, or respond to those comments where necessary. Um, so if you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It does make a difference. It's really appreciated, and it makes me smile. And what's better than that? So uh, do give the thumbs up. Uh, share it if you feel that it would be helpful to other people and if you haven't subscribed to the channel then why the heck not uh, please do subscribe and be first to know when hand little hints like this go live so thank you very much indeed for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye for now